Monsters are cool. That's just a fact. Godzilla is cool, Charizard is cool, the Mothman is cool, humans just tend to have a fascination with the monstrous and the unexplainable, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I have existed on this earth for almost 29 years, and in that time I have consumed a whole lot of media. TV shows, movies, video games, YouTube videos, books, music, theatre. I am a sucker for consuming the stories that people love to tell, and for the most part, I'll give anything a shot at least once. You've got a TV show that's utterly riddled with plot holes, but the dialogue writing is really good? I'm in. You like a weird niche genre of music that only like 11 people on the planet have ever heard of? I'll give it a listen, sure, why not? You want to go and see a movie directed by Paul W.S. Anderson? Okay, uh, maybe I draw the line there. The point is, I'm pretty open-minded and enjoy a wide range of topics, genres, and themes, and yet there is one topic in particular that always rises above the rest. Something that appeals to me to such a degree that the vast majority of my favorite media is linked back to it. Monsters. Now, the term monster is obviously a very, very vague one. Pokemon are monsters. Vampires are monsters. Serial killers are monsters. In fact, it can refer to just about anything or anyone that is scary or daunting in some way, or it can also just be a strange creature that's just a little guy. I have spent my life being fascinated with things like cryptids and kaiju, dragons and dinosaurs, all things that could loosely fall under this umbrella of monster. But recently, I was reflecting on what my favorite individual IPs and media franchises are, and the ones I enjoy returning to the most. And there was a running theme between several of them, and that was hunting for monsters. Monster hunters, if you will. And I imagine I can't be entirely alone in this sentiment, so I thought, Hell, let's explore this a little. What's the appeal of hunting monsters? Is it simply a matter of suspending disbelief in an authentic setting like any other fantasy or science fiction world? Is it some weird conquering of our deepest fears, or is it some hero complex situation? Is it just that corner of my brain that's still a monkey being hunted by some big ancient predator conquering that beast? Today, I want to take a look at a few different IPs across different types of media where the focus is hunting monsters. Take a look at what makes them so appealing, how the characters go about hunting their own brand of monster, and just sort of enjoy the topic with all of you. Let's talk about it. So what media am I talking about exactly? Well, there's several that stand front and center as my favorite media around. The most obvious one for those that follow this channel and the best to ever do it in my opinion is of course Monster Hunter. It's right there in the title. What do you do in that game? You'll hear them ask, a smirk curled across their face as they fancy themselves a world-class comedian in that moment. Monster Hunter takes a very direct approach to the topic. The monsters here are quite literally large, ferocious beasts that inhabit the world alongside your character, and it's your job to head out into the wilderness and hunt them down. Now, there's obviously a lot of little things that make me love Monster Hunter. The setting, though broadly fantasy, is unique to the series. The weapons and armor are, for the most part, visually stunning, along with the environment, and the gameplay is top-notch. But let's not kid ourselves. The best part of Monster Hunter is the monsters. Looking for a dinosaur that punches you so hard you explode? Brachydeus has you covered. Fancy a T-Rex tiger dragon hybrid? Go for it, here's a Tigrex. You want a giant squid covered in bones? He's a Nakakos. Have at it, champ. These things are, for all intents and purposes, well and truly out of your league. They would be entirely impossible for you to fight in real life without some form of heavy ordnance. Even things like Great Jagras would make quick work of you, and if you don't believe me, go and fight a crocodile or a bear or a tiger or something in hand-to-hand -hand combat and see how you're feeling afterwards. And there it is. We're scratching the surface of the appeal already. As I said, the way the hunter goes about taking down the monsters here is very direct. It's very brute force. They are incredibly skilled individuals in the context of the game, but they are freaks of nature, infinitely strong and durable and immune to the effects of gravity. That's the fantasy of it. There's certainly a large range of weapons to choose from, some more elegant than others, but the premise is simple. Track a monster, engage a monster, slay a monster, and the means of slaying that monster is by using a very large weapon. No magic or anything of the sort, just duck, dive, and dodge around and take it down. It's a power trip. For all intents and purposes, each weapon in Monster Hunter is far too large to wield in the way that the hunters do, and yet they can. In fact, they use them so effectively that they can take down creatures they have no business even being in the vicinity of. It's a very rich and immersive world, but a power fantasy through and through.
Okay, so this video may be all about hunting monsters, but it isn't all about Monster Hunter. So let's move on to a series that can certainly draw a lot of parallels with Monster Hunter, but is absolutely its own thing conceptually and in execution. Spanning books, video games, live action, and even anime, the Witcher series does monster hunting differently, but in an absolutely awesome way as well. Whereas in Monster Hunter, you play as a protagonist that is effectively a self-insert character for the player, the Witcher franchise is told with a focus on Geralt of Rivia, as well as a couple of other characters depending on which piece of media you're consuming. Geralt's personality is stoic and often cynical, which gives a very different look into the monster hunting fantasy. Where elsewhere in other stories the encounters are epic and you are regarded a hero, Geralt is an experienced and grizzled witcher, an individual mutated and molded to be the ultimate monster hunter, who is mostly regarded as a monster himself by the general population. This sends a whole lot of prejudice his way, and despite the fact that any that wish to act on that prejudice are very swiftly dispatched, it still paints a pretty miserable existence for our hero. In the games, you can of course sway his personality, making him more or less heartless in his endeavors as you like, but by and large, he is interested in looking after himself and those he cares for, working for coin rather than honor most of the time. Though heroic, he is greatly flawed, which makes him very relatable. His style of hunting monsters also differs from Monster Hunter quite a lot. Geralt is not just naturally gifted, no Witcher is. They are made, created and subject to the Trial of the Grasses when they are about 10 years old, wherein they are genetically altered through a concoction of potions that outright kills most of them that undertake it. Once they finally make it to being a witcher, they then use a wide variety of different tools, from different swords to potions to luring out specific creatures with specific materials. It's a whole detective style process a lot of the time to even discover what exactly Geralt is up against. It's a very involved technical process. Likewise, the monsters you find in the witcher stories, largely due to their Scandinavian and European inspirations, are very grim and horrific in their depictions. Undead such as ghouls and wraiths, huge monsters monstrosities like griffins and fiends, and disturbing ancient beings like leshens all breathe a freakish element into the world and make it one that you absolutely would not want to live in, which greatly contrasts against Monster Hunter as well in my opinion. It's a unique, almost depressing view on the fantasy we enjoy, and yet we enjoy it still. The Witcher 3 outsells Monster Hunter World 2 to 1 in fact, so the appeal can't just be some glorious hero complex, can it? The final video game example I want to touch on before moving on to some other media is not even a game about hunting monsters, but there's a specific part of this game, potentially untouched by many, that I enjoy a lot and falls into our vague monster hunting category for today's video. And that is the legendary animal hunts in Red Dead Redemption 2, and also some of the stuff in one of the best video game DLC packs ever made, Undead Nightmare. I think this gives a taste of how far the fantasy of hunting monsters can extend. With regards to Red Dead 2, there are a total of of 16 legendary animals across the game's map that can be hunted down and killed for rare materials. And this particular iteration of today's theme is probably the most realistic because, well, there's not really anything supernatural or fantasy about it. Back in the Wild West, I imagine a particularly large and cantankerous bear that had a tendency to, I don't know, tear through campsites and carriages would be considered a monster. It's not outlandish in any way, and whilst that lack of fantasy means that it's not exactly what I'm looking for in my Monster Hunter fantasy, it certainly shouldn't be overlooked. And if you do want some fantastical monster elements in your silly cowboy game, do yourself a favor and go and play Undead Nightmare. It is one of the best DLC packs ever, and whilst the focus is on the zombies, you can go and find yourself some other crazy creatures, including a horse for each of the horsemen of the apocalypse, Sasquatches, and Chupacabras. Okay, moving on from video games, let's talk about a couple of shows. Starting with one that is probably my favorite show ever. Is it the best show ever? No, absolutely not. Not at all. It's repetitive, it's predictable, its story is cyclical as all hell, but I love it nonetheless. It's supernatural, baby. Saving people, hunting things family business. Supernatural struck a chord with me back when it debuted in 2005 when I was 10 and frankly was one of the driving forces behind me being basically obsessed with monsters and cryptids growing into a teenager. And no I'm not touching the fanfic portion of this show with a 10 foot pole because 
I uh, hear it's, uh, it's something. Supernatural, in case you don't know, is about two brothers whose mum and girlfriend got murdered by a demon trying to find said demon. And when they do, oops, it also kills their dad and then they kill it. But oh no, it also turns out that one of them is the destined vessel of Satan, whilst the other is the vessel of Michael. And they've got trust issues. And also there's angels sometimes and the angels are assholes. And also the brothers will just sacrifice themselves without hesitation for the other one if they need to but get really mad when the other one does the same thing for them. Uh, spoilers for like the first six seasons of Supernatural, I guess. Just the whole series, really. Sam and Dean are an interesting duo because they are simultaneously the best hunters ever, whilst being grossly incompetent at their job and deeply flawed at every single turn. One of them almost always ends up in a position where they need to be saved by the other one. It's a formula that works, I suppose. When I said the story was cyclical, I wasn't joking. Each season tends to boil down to, oh, you sacrificed your soul at the end of the last season. Joke's on you because I sacrificed my soul to save your soul instead. But I'm getting sidetracked. That is beside the points for today's video. What we're looking at here is the monster hunting aspect. Now, monsters in the context of Supernatural are pretty much modern takes on some of the classics. We're working with ghosts, vampires, demons, shapeshifters, and the like. The setting of Supernatural is modern day USA. And basically, the world is exactly the same as ours, except the thing under your bed is real and will eat you, but somehow this isn't common knowledge. In universe, there are a network of hunters who operate secretly to kill these things every time one of them rears its ugly head. Our protagonists, and at time antagonists, are Sam and Dean Winchester. Their means of hunting are with modern solutions to classic monster weaknesses, as well as a good chunk of old school magic and plenty of Latin. They use modern guns with silver bullets for werewolves, machetes to behead vampires, devil's traps to capture demons, demons and Latin incantations to exercise them. When not perusing the overarching story of the show, certain episodes play out like a monster of the week sort of scenario. They have no bearing on the story at large and simply pick some terrible beastie for the brothers to hunt down. These tend to be my favorite episodes and often give a great example of how monster hunting happens in universe. Usually we get a sneak peek at the monster murdering the crap out of some poor unimportant character. Sam and Dean then hear about the job by reading about some suspicious detail of the death in local news. They show up and do some light detective work to determine what the monster is and then they gear up to take it down. Dean, as well as most other hunters in the show has a hidden compartment in his car that stores a small arsenal of all kinds of weapons for the job. And who can forget Bobby? Bobby, for all intents and purposes, is the handler of Supernatural. He's the guy who tips them off to new jobs, equips them with the knowledge they need to take down some new big evil creature. He's a shoulder to cry on. He gets them out of trouble with the law whenever that happens. He's the go-to guy. So to round up my ramble, Supernatural's monster hunting power fantasy is more or less entirely about machismo. It's about being a big strong dude fighting a big strong monster and ignoring your emotions until they boil over and you do something stupid. And whilst I'd like to try and avoid the story focus on nothing being stronger than family in my little breakdown here, it's hard to do because it's so uh, intertwined in the whole show's theming. Another show that takes a slightly different but no less campy approach is X-Files. Perhaps the peak of 90s television, X-Files is undoubtedly an enormous influence for Supernatural and just nerd culture in general. And whilst it deals far less with the biblical Armageddon and far more with science fiction, it's one of the most prime examples of a creature feature monster of the week TV shows out there. Rather than following two brothers, X-Files follows two FBI agents. Fox Mulder and Dana Scully, one a believer in the supernatural and aliens, and the other a skeptic. As they go gallivanting across, yep, the United States of America, baby, seeking the truth. X-Files is much less explicitly about hunting monsters as it is finding them and trying to figure out what their deal is. They absolutely will shoot things if said things are aggressive, but Mulder and Scully are no better suited to slay a beastie than any other FBI agent is, I would say. The monsters they deal with also tend to be either aliens or some form of extraordinary mutant humans, such as Eugene Toombs, who could stretch and squish his body into small spaces to get into people's houses and eat their liver, or the pure nightmare fuel that is the Fluke Man, a half-human, half-fluke worm creature living in the sewers of New Jersey. All in all, not so much about hunting monsters, but along a very similar vibe and one of my personal favorites. <laughs> 
All right, in the interest of not letting this video get too long and rambly, which I'm sure it is already, the final example I want to talk about is a children's animated movie. Bet you didn't see that one coming. Now, before I go through this, do yourself a favor and go and watch The Sea Beast before I spoil it here because it's a banger of a film. And if you need convincing, Carl Urban voices the main character. That's all you're gonna know. The Sea Beast is a film from 2022 with some very cool world building and narrative beats that make for a super engaging monster hunting world. The premise is straightforward and I'll just quote the wiki here because it sets it out pretty effectively. For centuries, sea beasts have surfaced to wreak havoc against humankind. In response, crews of hunters venture outwards on their ships to hunt the beasts down. The most famous and successful being the crew of the Inevitable. Led by the legendary Captain Crow, his first mate Sarah Sharp, and his adopted son and boatswain Jacob Holland. The hunters are supported by the King and Queen of the Crown by means of the Three Bridges Society as a result of the hunters' success over the centuries. So yeah, this is a world where gigantic monsters roam the seas and crews of pirates set out upon the waves to take them down. The setting and aesthetic of it is all really cool, leaning into the pirate vibes quite a lot. Now, granted the story of the movie is focused on maybe these creatures have been unfairly demonized and hunting isn't so great after all, and the mentor of the protagonist ends up being more of an antagonist, um, which, which fits it being a kids movie and, and gives us the classic trope of hey this giant creature is actually totally chill and nice and a friend but you can't deny that it's some awesome world building. The means of hunting the monsters appears to be that ships in universe are equipped with specialized tools and weaponry to deal with these huge creatures and the hunters on board are also just really good at not being killed in the process with the captain left to make the killing blow and take the trophy that will prove the hunt was successful upon returning to shore it's cool man good movie man not for those with thalassophobia though there's this one scene that is just completely horrifying these are not the only examples of monster hunting media out there by any means, just some of my personal favourites. You've got multiple other video games alone that explore these ideas. Things like Wild Hearts, which was great conceptually and a lot of fun. It was just kneecapped by being handled badly, optimised poorly and not given the support it needed. Dauntless, which takes monster hunting into a more MMO style game and is worth checking out honestly. And God Eater, which I admittedly don't know much about but I hear it's quite similar, just a lot more anime. You've got book series like The Dresden Files, movies like Troll Hunter, you can play as a monster hunter ranger in D&D, hell even things like Attack on Titan can probably scratch the itch for some folks. The point is that this is a big draw for me, a narrative beat that goes a long way to hook me into a fantasy or not so fantasy world. There's absolutely a time and a place for a story of intrigue and espionage, deep character moments with extensive monologues, lore and order and all that jazz, but when the adversary is just a big ugly monster and the protagonist is checking some notebook like a Pokedex as they prepare to go and hunt it down, it will always be a recipe for success in my mind. And even when it's not, there's gonna be a base level enjoyment for me. And to answer my question at the start of the video, what exactly is the appeal of hunting monsters? Well, with so many examples throughout different forms of media, I'm sure the appeal changes for every person. All in all, it's a little bit of everything. I think there's a certain element of researching or investigating a strange occurrence that intrigues me, and the result of that investigation not just being some boring old crazy person is just the outcome that I need. There's something primal, something human about the feeling of taking down something where the odds are stacked against you. And well, it's as simple as this. Monsters are cool, that's just a fact. Thanks for watching this video guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know some of your favourite monster hunting media in the comments down below. Don't forget to like the video folks, and why not share it with a friend if you think they'll like it too. That's all for this video, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.